All right, so I am Shannon Spake. I am a, um, a many things. I'm a mom of twin boys. Uh, they're both 12 years old. I'm a wife. Uh, I'm a sports reporter. I'm a marathoner. I'm an Ironman athlete, uh, Ironman Foundation ambassador. And I'm also someone who um, has lived with scoliosis uh, since I was diagnosed at nine. Uh, so for 36 years, I've had scoliosis in my life. Um, so when I was nine years old, I was diagnosed, I think as, as most young people are, or, or a lot of young people back when I was younger are, uh, it was in the school screenings. And they told my parents that I had a curve. Uh, we went to, at the time, I think there wasn't, and maybe just because of the environment that we lived in, I felt like there wasn't a, a lot of research and a lot of information about scoliosis. I think that the Harrington rods and the uh, Closet, the Closet uh, Dubois uh, rods, which is what I have, were, were pretty new, fairly new. Um, in fact, I, I remember my parents telling me that if, if I had had the surgery about six months prior to when I had it, I would have most likely been in a body cast um, for about six months. So it was really new. Dr. Shufflebarger had just brought it over uh, to the United States as, as far as my memory, um, kind of as far as I remember uh, in terms of my parents telling me the process that I was going through. Cause I was very young, nine years old. Um, I was dancing at the time. I was very active. And back then, they believed that all of those things would make your curve worse. So all of those things had to be eliminated from my life. I had to stop dancing. I had to stop doing a lot of physical activities because of fear that th that would increase my curve. And obviously we know now that a lot of that stuff does help. And um, and it's it's more puberty and the growth spurts and those things that, that are um, significant in, in kind of making that curve go worse. So my parents tried to treat my curve for a really long time with chiropractic care. And I 100% believe that it eliminated a lot of the deformities that I would have seen, um, a lot of the shoulder um, issues. I, I didn't have a whole lot of that. I, I do have the, the rib um, that, that sort of comes up above my, above my chest. So you can still see that to this day. Uh, and I didn't have a lot of pain. So I, I think that I was a 36, 48 when ultimately I was uh, told that I had to have the surgery and I didn't experience a lot of pain. It didn't, in, it didn't really affect my life very much. And I do believe that chiropractic care did help that. Um, I, I never had to wear a brace and I, and I kind of felt at the time, as I know that braces are so different nowadays for, for young people, but back then it was really, um, Intru intrusive and, and and it was big and, and it was bulky. And I remember I did have some friends who had to wear them and it it was painful and you could see it under the, you know, under your clothes and, and obviously being, you know, 10, 11, 12 years old at the time, kids can, can be a little cruel when um, people are different. So uh, when I was 12, um, 1989 is when I had the surgery. I was almost 13. I had it on January 15th, uh, 1989. And I think like most kids who are, you know, having to face this, it's really scary. You don't know what your future is going to be like. You don't know what your scar is going to look like. You don't know how other people um, will be able to relate or understand what you've gone through. I, um, yeah, I, I, and, and it was a long process uh, in terms of getting to the hospital. I do remember that we had to do a lot of blood draws and I had to give my own blood back just in case there were some complications. Uh, so it was a long process. And I do remember that I couldn't look at my x-rays whenever the doctor would put the x-rays up on the, on the screen. Um, I, I would have to walk out of the room because it, it, it made me really upset. Uh, the surgery, I think, despite the fact that it was so many years ago, I remember a lot about that time. I remember waking up the next day. I remember the doctors getting me out of bed immediately. I remember the pain. Uh, it was obviously a very different surgery back then. Uh, I was in the, the hospital for a week and um, I was out of school for a month. I did homeschooling a lot different back, <laughs> back then homeschooling than it is now virtually with Zoom and all that stuff. And a lot of, uh, I spent a lot of time just kind of laying around. Uh, it, I remember going back to school. I remember my, my doctors telling me that it would take a full year for the fusion uh, to, to set in. I do have two rods. I don't know how many, um, how much other hardware I have in there. Again, I feel like maybe because it was so new, maybe we weren't 
as aware of all of the things that were going to be done to me. And, 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 and as far as me being um, a part of that process, my parents kind of made a lot of those decisions. But I do remember finally going back to school, having to be very careful for the first year while the fusion set, not being able to do a lot of things, not being able to, to participate in sports. Uh, kids certainly were a, a little cruel, but, <laughs> and I think that this is something that anybody who has an experience that's outside the norm goes through. I do think it's maybe a lot more compassionate for other human beings. I actually think, having scoliosis and having the surgery and experiencing everything that came with that time and, and, and the future has made me stronger, um, both in terms of dealing with people and kind of having a, you know, empathy for other people who, who go through experiences. And I think it's also made, I know it's also made me stronger in terms of not allowing anything to um, hold me back because it, no matter, I could have 18 rods on my back and then it wouldn't hold me back. And scoliosis and the hair, the, the rods that I have on my back certainly haven't done that. As I mentioned at the top, I, I do marathons. I, I carry twin boys. I do triathlons. There are certain things obviously that we can't do that our doctors tell us like, you know, skydiving and playing professional football and those types of things and not things that I necessarily uh, would do anyways. But uh, I do think it's made me stronger. And, and there are... I, I, there are very few times that I actually think about the rods in my back and, and think about my my situation and my and my scar. I, I really truly forget that I even had this happen. I've gone in for massages at times, and and the the massage therapist has looked at me and, and said, "Hey, did you, did you have surgery back here?" And I completely forget to tell them sometimes, truly, because it's um it's just a part of me and and again it's not something that i have ever allowed to limit me i was very blessed i had it at a young age i know when you know older people have it um you know i've, I've talked to a lot of people it, it's it's you know it's it's more painful the recovery is a a longer process uh so i was very blessed that i had it done and uh, i wouldn't change anything about it for sure Shannon, thank you so much for sharing your story. I'm Michelle Marks. I'm the Executive and Research Director at Setting Scoliosis Straight, and we are just so grateful to have patients like you that are willing to come and share and help other patients by sharing your story. One of the things that you commented on in um, your story was that you weren't able to look at your preoperative x-rays, um, and it made you too angry. I'm wondering, so two questions. Did you overcome that fear after your curve was corrected? And were you able to look at your post-operative x-rays? And what advice would you have other patients that maybe are struggling with that same issue? Yeah, I think now I can look at it and appreciate how far I've come in terms of what my what my back looked like. And and I, I don't have any problem looking at my, my um, scans now with the rods in it. I actually think they look pretty cool. I think it was just a lot of fear. And, you know, when you have to kind of face the fact as a young, as a young person that you're going to have to have this surgery where there are so many unknowns and it's the thing that sort of reminds you that this is going to happen. I think that's what it was. I think it was just the fear of like, okay, well, that's what it looks like. Yeah, I really have to have this done. Um, thankfully, I think my parents were really uh, patient with me and, and allowed me to feel that and didn't make me, you know, kind of stay in there. They, they protected me, I think, from a, from a lot of things and, and also um, gave me as much information as I wanted to know. I remember the night before my surgery, my mom obviously was with me and she made it, um, she made it fun, right? We went and got McDonald's and uh, we, we got ice cream. And then every year, on the eve of my surgery, we would get the same exact thing for years and years and years. And uh, yeah, so I, I think that that's the biggest thing is it's a very scary thing. It, it's a very scary thing. I mean, you're having major surgery. You're having something that's gonna be with you for the rest of your life. You're having something that's going to leave a scar on your body that people are gonna be able to see. And I think that you really have to be patient with 
um, the young people or even, you know, the adults who are getting this done because it is scary and that's okay. It's okay to be afraid, right? I mean, we're all human. And, and so I think that was the biggest thing for me is just facing sort of these scans that were like, there it is, that's it. Um, but now I'm, I'm totally cool with seeing it. And I actually like love it. I'm like, Hey, look at what I have in my back. Um, I'm bionic. <laughs> Nice. Thank you. Well, thanks for sharing that vulnerability as well. I mean, yeah. other other patients seeing you such a strong woman person and uh, contributor to society could be vulnerable and could be scared. Right. And admit that that's fantastic. Uh, so the next question that I have for you and you kind of alluded to how care has been progressing over the years. You've talked about Harrington rods would have been the option had Dr. Shufflebarger not brought Cottrell Dubassé to the United States so that you could have this new procedure, which at the time was cutting edge, right? And now fast forward 30 years and the, the operation looks quite different, right? Than it, than it did when you had your surgery and your hospital stay was, was a, a week long, yeah. whereas now it's two to three days is the average length of stay for the hospital. So care has really been progressing, thank God. And our organization, the Harm Study Group's research and setting scoliosis straight, being able to help disseminate and share that information has been really, really critical. And I think something that we should be really proud that we've been able to do over the past 25 plus years. What is, what are your thoughts on supporting research and ensuring that um, resources are committed to, to doing the critical research needed to advance care? First of all, say the name of the rods again, because I know that I, I completely messed it up, right? I always say Harrington rods, and then my parents are like, you know, those aren't actually the ones that you have, right? <laughs> you can just say CD rods. It's Cottrell yeah. and Dubassé, and they are two <laughs> spine surgeons that worked together to design that system, yeah. Perfect. That's what I have. Um, yep. <laughs> Uh, yes, obviously. Um, you know, I think that some of the advancements, I mean, just to allow us to get back to a normal life and, and have that life as normal as possible. Uh, obviously, my my um, my flexibility is is greatly um reduced because of the rods that are in my back. I, I can't bend over. I, I can't bend my back. And I know that there are a lot of things that are moving forward to, to kind of keep some of that flexibility for young kids. And I think that that's super important because that, I mean, that will allow you to get this surgery, to have your correction and to truly move on with a normal life because you know, I can't get in the pool and like do a backflip with my kids or a front flip with my kids. I can't do a somersault. I can't do some of the things that, you know, that, that I was able to do before. And I think the advancements in terms of allowing people to not be as nervous about post-op, because this is something that is, I mean, if, if it's not corrected, it's painful, it's debilitating. And I know that there's a lot of fear with people who don't want to get it. I have a friend right now who's, um, whose son is going to have to have the surgery in December. You know, I think for parents just getting information and support because they now, um, a have to, like I mentioned, uh, handle their, their young person who has a lot of fear going into this surgery, but not only that, how do we move forward to make sure that they heal properly and have the best recovery. And if they do deal with kids in school or bullying or any of those things, how do we then deal with that? So I think information is vital as with any, um, anything that we deal with in life, but certainly when it, be, when it's so close to me personally, I have two boys and, and, you know, they don't have it right now, but I'm, I'm constantly having them check just in case. And again, it's early treatment. It's, post treatments, all of those things that I think are really important. Totally agree. Thank you, Shannon. And thanks again so much for being here today to share your story. I'm gonna go ahead and pass it to Amar. Hi, Shannon, my name is Hi, Amar. Amar. Thank you so much for coming in and being vulnerable and sharing your story. I, for one, appreciate it a lot. Um, I was diagnosed with adolescent idiopathic scoliosis in the fall of 2016, and I received a spinal fusion procedure in April of 2021 to correct my 51 degree lumbar curve. Um, so I'm about a year and two months post-op. Um, you've highlighted in your story how you've run Ironmans, triathlons, you've carried twins, like all of which are incredibly impressive. 
feet. Uh, my first question I have for you is, how have you adapted your workout routines, training routines, and your overall lifestyle around having a spinal fusion? I wish I could say that I, I have to adapt, but I, I try not to. I, I try to, I mean, obviously there, like I said, there are some things that I can't do. It, it's harder for me to do a sit up than, than, you know, it's harder for me to do some things that require, I, I like to say that I can't do pull-ups because the rods in my back, but I'm sure that's just because I, I haven't tried hard enough to do a pull-up. Uh, but I, I do use it as, as an excuse there. Right. Um, I, I think that, um, again, as I've gotten older and I've been as active as I, as I have, I do think that there are areas, whether it be my neck or, um, or my hips, which is above or below, um, where my rods are. I think that takes a little bit more impact and I have to be a little bit more conscious about that, whether it be stretching or getting massages or just really being in tune with my body. But I think with anyone who has a major surgery, like we have, I think that makes you even more in tune with your body. And uh, so I wish that I could say that I, like I modify so many things, but I, I try not to let it limit me and I try not to let it be something. And, and I think I've done a pretty good job of that, but there are things that I think I have to be aware of and be a little bit more sensitive to give myself some grace, right? When it comes to certain things. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. I completely agree. I think it's good that uh, you're letting other patients know that scoliosis isn't necessarily limiting after spinal fusion. And I know a lot of people, including myself, were really worried about that aspect um, when it comes to recovery and all that. Um, and that kind of leads into my second question. Um, thank you so much again for being vulnerable with your story. Um, I, for one, relied on patient stories uh, before I got my spinal fusion procedure, and it really helped me feel comfortable with my choice to receive a spinal fusion procedure. Um, what are the benefits that you've noticed about being open with your diagnosis and sharing your scoliosis story with other patients? Well, I think it's just that I think it's to, to be able to help, whether it be parents or, or, you know, young folks or even older folks who have to have this to know that it is okay to know that people have gone through it to know that they'll come out the other side. And as massive as it is, I mean, we're dealing with our spines, right? I mean, again, it's, it's okay to be nervous. It's okay to be fearful and it's okay to know that I'll get past this. And I think that that's the biggest thing. I, and, you know, just when I was younger and I, I had recently had the surgery, I would go and talk to younger kids and, and just showing them my scar, right? Just what is, what is a scar going to look like when I'm, you know, this age or I know, do you have the scar on your hip from your spinal fusion from your, from the um, fusion? Cause they took bone from my hip when I was younger. So do you have that as well, Amar? No, I have, I actually have artificial bone graft. So I just have a single scar on my back. Got it. Yeah. And that was the one that actually um, became the largest for me because of all the bending that you do from your hip. And so that one is actually more significant than uh, the scar that's on my back. And it's, I mean, nowadays it's crazy. Cause like you could get like your scar treated with laser treatments. You can do all of these things like the scar lotions that you could put on and mine are 39 year old scars that, that are there. And, and again, I just recently had hamstring surgery. So now like on my back, I've got a scar down my back and then I've got one on my hip. And now I have one like right by my, my back end uh, where I had the hamstring surgery. And I'm like, I'm just a roadmap of, of just uh, experiences in life. Um, but I think, you know, having that, that smile and that laugh and being like, it's okay, it's a scar. We'll be fine. Um, I think that because obviously there, there's a lot of insecurities when it comes to that, right? I mean, people are going to see it. You're going to take off your top at the pool or you're going to, you're going to, you're going to, people are going to see it and how are they going to respond and knowing that it's, it's just okay. It's, it's part of you now and it's part of your story. And it, I think it's pretty cool. Honestly, I, I don't know where I, I got that, that sort of um, mindset to, to, to view it that way. And maybe I, maybe I just over the years, that that positive vibe and, and creating that energy around um, my thought process with my scar has then led me to have that thought process. But I think it's a, I think it's a positive thing. Yeah. Thank you so much. I truly think having a positive mindset and like you having the positive mindset and sharing your story with us, it'll help so many other patients that are struggling with scoliosis. So thank you so much. 
Hi, Shannon. My name is Noelle Anderson. A little bit about me. I was diagnosed with scoliosis when I was 11 years old. I did bracing when I was 12 and 13 and then had spinal fusion surgery when I was 14, placing two rods and 19 screws in my spine. So um, Amar kind of stole my first question. So I kind of modified um, to make a new one just now. But I know you mentioned a little bit about doing massage therapy. I know that helps me a ton with my back and managing that. So I guess my question is, how do you take care of your back now all these years later? And it's so crazy because when I was young and I first had it, none of this stuff was available, right? We didn't have dry needling. We didn't have like, I mean, you had massage therapy, but you weren't bringing a 13 year old to get them. Like, it was like, Hey, here's your, you know, there's yoga. There's, I mean, there's so much that, that you can do nowadays. And even stuff that you could do just talking to some chiropractors and talking to some doctors, if you are diagnosed to try to help with that curve and maybe prevent it from um, advancing. Um, so what do I do? So my, my stuff is not necessarily with my spine. Um, it's more like I mentioned with my hips, with my sciatic. So I'll do some dry needling. I'll do some shockwave therapy. Um, you know, I think like the, the, just breaking up scar tissue is super important, which again, they, they did never did that for me when I was growing up. And, and once those scar, that scar starts to kind of stick and get sticky and the scar tissue builds up, I think it does prevent some movement in your back. So I do go to people now who kind of work on that scar tissue. And again, there's lasers for your scar that can help with the healing. There's so much that you can do nowadays post-op, um, but, but maybe, maybe the biggest thing is, is kind of what Omar just mentioned is the mindset. I just wrote this down. Uh, I, I was um, on Facebook and started following uh, this woman who had had the scoliosis surgery. And again, I don't know what her experience was like as, you know, a 30 year old or a 40 year old to have the scoliosis surgery. I know it's a lot more painful. I know that the recovery is a lot different than what I went through, but one thing that kind of really struck me was she would call like she would she would call it like a disability or she would call it a disease and to me like i have never ever looked at my scoliosis as a disability or as like a disease it's just like something that i have and so i think maybe outside of just the physical things that you can do and, and just like you guys mentioned is just the mindset to have you know it's it's something that we have it's something that we've had corrected. It's now something that we, and, and a lot of people have things corrected. Right. It, and, um, and I think it's, it's a positive mindset and not calling it those things. I don't know that it, it really struck me as kind of odd. Cause I had never thought about it that way. I'd never thought about myself as disabled or as, as someone who had a, a disease because it was scoliosis. So I think that's something that, um, the positive mindset, I think is something that's important. I, I totally agree with that because I know for me when I was younger, I was so ashamed of it. And to me, I kind of had that negative verbiage for it as well. But now as someone who advocates for scoliosis awareness, I see it now more as a purpose and more of, you know, of course we can't change that that happened to us, but we can use it for good and not let it hold us back by any means. So I love that. It's a purpose. Can I use that? Yes, you can. Take it away. Uh, <laughs> Uh, my second question is, so I'm studying broadcast news. I think it's very inspiring that you're a journalist. Um, did your overcoming of your scoliosis influence your career in any way? Um, you know, I, I don't think so. I mean, no, I, I think maybe being in sports, you know, I'm, I'm pretty active and I don't know if it was because I wasn't able to do it before my surgery. Like I mentioned, they made me stop doing all those things that I, that I love to do that post-surgery I was really, and I was a swimmer. So I think, you know, and, and obviously the swimming is the one thing that, that all of us can do. It's super low impact. It, I think it keeps you flexible. I, it, it saved and changed my life for sure. Being a swimmer in my high school and see, in uh, college years, so I think more so that being an athlete and being involved in those athletic things is what led me to my career right now in sports, just that passion for it. And, and obviously still what I do with marathon running, well, not right now, because I'm healing. Um, but um, what I do with marathon running and, um, and triathlon really helped me relate to the, to the athletes that I cover. And that's important. 
Well, on behalf of Setting Scoliosis Straight and the Harm Study Group, I'd really like to thank you, Shannon, for sharing your story today and helping us promote our Scoliosis Strong video series. And to Amir and Noel, thank you so much for participating and asking such thoughtful questions to Shannon. And for all the patients who this might reach in the future, please let us know if this video series is helpful or if you have any suggestions on how we might improve it in the future. We value your opinion, we want to support you, and we look forward to hearing from you and thank you for your support.